Hey everyone, Daniel here from Grow Your Music Studio. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about some thoughts that I've been having lately about customer service and what customers are actually after when they join piano lessons. So I thought I would get my phone out here and, and record a quick live video. Um, since I had been reflecting on this over the last week or so, there's a quote that has been really helpful for me in, in, um, in my business life. And it's a quote by a really legendary marketer named Jay Abraham. And the quote goes something like this. If you can describe your customer's problem better than they can describe that problem, the customer is automatically going to assume that you have the answer and the solution. Now, the really cool thing about this is that if you can provide an insight to a customer that, or a studio family, I keep saying customer, but in reality, a studio family, if you can provide an insight to a studio family that helps them overcome a problem that they're experiencing with your product, which is music lessons, piano lessons, voice lessons, violin lessons, whatever it is you teach, if you can provide an insight uh, that helps them reframe a problem they're experiencing, it's very likely that that's gonna build more trust with them, it's gonna build goodwill, and the long-term effect of that is it's going to increase retention in your studio. So here's the thing, and, and this is what I want, I'm getting at. This is a mildly controversial statement, I think, but customers aren't buying, many of our customers, many of our studio families aren't buying music lessons. They're actually buying an outcome, and the outcome they want is a talented child, uh, the outcome they want is a child that is good at music. Even more, and if you dig deeper underneath that, what they're really buying is they want a, a child with great self-esteem. They want a child that is well-disciplined, um, that, that can just sit at the piano and play music. So here's the problem. Here's the problem with this. As families get deeper and deeper into music lessons, what happens? They're coming to you and they're saying, um, oh, you know, we can't get little Sally or little Johnny to play, to play music. We can't get them to sit, at the, to sit at the piano or to pick up their flute or to pick up their guitar and actually play the things that you've assigned. And over time, the friction from this increases and the pressure the parent feels is partially because of responsibility, but the pressure they're feeling is, is due to the fact that they originally joined this with a certain vision in mind. They wanted the child to be really, really good. They wanted that self-esteem. They wanted the child to, to accrue all these benefits. So here's what I'm getting at. If they don't get the outcome that they want, what are they gonna do? It's very likely that they're not you know, going to, to switch teachers. They're likely just giving up on the category of lessons as a whole, and that's why they quit. So here's the thing. When you begin to realize that the alternative to taking, that the alternative, the, the competition to, to lessons isn't another teacher or isn't sports or, or isn't extracurricular activities or student government, when you realize that the competition for, for music lessons is actually quitting, it begins to frame the problem that we experience as studio owners in a, in a completely different way. And let me, let me delineate what I'm saying here. Parents are giving up on lessons because they don't want the fight. We all understand this. Parents are giving up on lessons and giving up on us as teachers because we haven't delivered to them the product that they originally set out to buy. So here are some outcomes, here are some ramifications of that statement. When you begin to realize that this is actually the competition, this is going to change your marketing. When you begin to realize that the competition to, le to, to, le to lessons, that the alternative to taking lessons is just quitting and giving up entirely on the whole thing, what we begin to realize as the product is that from, a, from an educational standpoint, we need obviously to deliver great education to the student. But from a business standpoint, our primary goal is actually making that student happy and giving parents the thing that they say they want. 
They want a child that just goes and sits at the piano and plays. They want a child that goes into the room, picks up their guitar and plays. That's what they're looking for. And so for us, we have to reverse engineer our product, our lessons. We have to reverse engineer our product so that we can give parents the feeling they want, which is, oh, I'm proud of my child. Oh, my child is, is getting better at music. Oh, my child is doing the thing I want them to do, whether or not the child actually does that. And, and here's a perfect example. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take this from the abstract and actually put it in the concrete and I'm going to be done here for today. But here's the idea. When I began to realize that the true problem wasn't that the child wasn't practicing, but it was the parent's opinion of what that meant, I stopped worrying about, the, about students practicing and I went directly to work on, on the parents and giving them the permission for that to be okay. So I designed... Um, my lesson program around the, around the idea that I was going to make children really, really good at sight reading and actually give them time to practice in studio so that when they got home, and this is what I told parents, to, you know, to, to parents who are in my more casual program um, that I offer in my studio, I told them, you know, they're doing the bulk of their practice here. When they get home, all they need to do is rehearse things that they've been playing at the studio and that they already learned at the studio. And so they really don't need to go in there for that long. And I would often say this at the very beginning of lessons and really go to work on the child's sight reading skills so that as they got into higher and higher levels of accomplishment, that when they went home, they could actually um, begin to take some of that load off the lesson. In other words, instead of them learning all their song of the lesson, maybe they'll learn half the song of the lesson and then I send them home to get the rest. And I began over time to think of nurturing the child um, to the point where maybe only after a year would I ever send them home and have them completely learn a song on their own. That they would actually spend time in my studio learning their song so when they got home, there weren't the complaints like, oh, I don't know how to do this. This is a distinction possibly without a difference. In other words, we are all trying to help our students go home and, and, and be really good at what they do at home. But to understand that that ultimately isn't what, go isn't what is going to keep the parent in the studio, to realize that ultimately what's going to keep the parent in the studio is them giving themselves permission to be okay with the fact that maybe the student isn't practicing an hour a day, that's what's going to keep them in the studio. Well, that's when we begin to kind of move into to next level marketing territory, where we're actually beginning to understand that what isn't so important on the marketing side is how the student is doing educationally. What's more important is the parent's opinion and feelings and insights they have about their student's progress. So I'm still developing these thoughts and I'm thinking of writing a blog post around it. Um, but ultimately to summarize, and I'm, and I'm kind of done here for right now, ultimately to summarize is to realize that when we focus on the outcome the parent wants from the lessons and we do everything we possibly can to make that happen, or to give them a certain feeling that they're looking for, that's over here, then it kind of takes pressure off of us on the educational side to deliver this perfect product. When we realize that the marketing and the product are connected together, when the marketing and the lessons are connected together, and that they should inform each other, and that maybe if we're feeling pressure in the lessons, we can relieve that pressure by doing better marketing, then we really start getting into some next level thoughts. Then we really start getting into like next level marketing and we really take our marketing game to the next level and we will see families stay longer and longer. We'll see families really appreciate what we have to do. We'll see parents that don't feel as guilty that their kids aren't practicing all the time. And I think that's a great goal to have. We'll see, um, we'll see students that, that aren't putting all this pressure on themselves. The, the tears that we experience in the studio will, you know, will decrease. So, um, these are, these are kind of the outcomes that I've noticed in my own studio and that I really hope as you think more and more about outcomes that parents want and, and centering all your marketing around that, I think you'll start to see great results like that too. Um, so thanks so much for the comment there, Shelly. And uh, I'll, I'll maybe stay on here for 20, 30 more seconds. If anyone has a question here at the end of this uh, idea that I've been sharing, I, I see there's a number of people on right now, but if you have a question, just type it in the chat right now. Otherwise, I'm, I'm going back to uh, doing some writing this afternoon. And um, I'm going to go back to that. If there's no questions, then I will bid you adieu and say have a great weekend. And uh, I'm going to be doing a few more of these live videos over December. Um, just kind of testing this out and seeing what I think of it. All right. Have a great day. Have a great weekend.